This is Jamie Coots, Director of the Chartered Market Technicians Association. I'm here at the annual symposium for 2018 and I'm joined by John Bollinger. Hi John. My pleasure. <laughs> so John, uh, yesterday your talk talked about um, what you would say are first principles. So I wanted to just touch upon a couple of those really key takeaways that I, that I understood from the presentation. And one of the things that you mentioned was that in this age of quantitative investing, that the skill set of a TA or a technical analyst is even more important than ever because quantitative analysts need ideas and that generally comes from technical analysis or, or TA. So could you speak to that point a little bit more? Well, um, in the bad old days when um, it wasn't so popular to be a technician in the, in the uh, institutional environment, um, if you wanted to find the, the uh, technician in, in a particular institution, you'd go down the hall and you'd find the door labeled quantitative analysis and you'd open it up and there'd be a technician inside there. And the reason that technician was inside, inside there was exactly what you just touched upon because the, the quants um, that were working in there needed ideas. Mm. Um, there are a few basic ideas that quants have been pursuing forever, but they needed more. And technicians who've been studying markets forever, um, who really understood the first principles of how markets are made and how markets work, how investors work, how traders work, um, they have at their disposal a huge amount of market knowledge. So uh, the dialogue between the quantitative community and the technical community was really profitable for both because quants would get great ideas and, 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 and on the other hand, the techs would get the technology to execute their ideas in a methodical and, and, and um, practical way that we're rule-based. Mm. Um, so the synergy between the two pieces was very important. Right, okay. And I mean, you were saying yesterday that you've had a system that you've been trading for almost 40 years. 25. I'm, 25. 25. Okay. And I wish I had a system I've been trading for 40 years, but I haven't done that yet. Maybe in 15 years' yeah, time, yeah. I'll ask you. Yeah, yeah. But uh, the, you're saying that a lot of the problems with uh, the quantitative models that are being developed is that they're being re-optimized, and you're concerned that actually they lack that sort of robustness. Now, how do you know that you've got a robust trading strategy when you find one? Well, um, the first thing you want to do is you want to you want to get in touch with some first principle of, of, of the market, some core idea of how markets actually work, mm. um, whether it's uh, um, supply, demand, or, or um, excessive performance, which we call relative strength or, or, or alpha. But you want to get in touch with some core mechanism of, of the market. Um, that puts you on the right side of the equation to start with. Um, and then you want to test to see that it's robust. So if, if uh, say, you're using a 20-day um, moving average as a component of, of, of mm. this approach, you want to see that the 17 and the 18 and the 19 work as well as the 21, the 22, and the 23 mm. um, so that you don't have this sort of sensitivity to um, very tight parameters. Right. Um, what happens um, with so much with data mining is they find, um, they, you know, they go into very, very successfully data mine in the area of, of, of the market and they find something that's producing alpha at, at that moment. Mm. But it's fragile. Um, it, it's just, a, it, it's an artifact of the current market. So they have to continually re-optimize in order to keep that working. Um, so that you have a cycle of development optimization, you know, development op optimization keeps keeps on going back and forth. Mm. When you get in touch with a first principles idea, you can get a very robust idea um, that that doesn't need to be re-optimized, and because it reflects a basic mechanism of the market, will continue to work for a very very long time. Mm -hmm. Uh, until something something you know fundamentally changes in the market, and what, what might that be? Um, for example, trading rules. Um, um, we used to have to wait for an uptick to short a stock. So when they changed those rules, um, that changes a fundamental fact of the marketplace. So mm -hmm. so that'll break a bunch of things that, that that worked before, and and in addition, that'll create a number of things going forward that will work in the future. Right. Okay. 
Um, you, you know, you also uh, mentioned that we all must actually question orthodoxy in the marketplace and the financial markets are really littered with financial uh, orthodoxies, dogmas, memes. Is there any, at the moment, uh, current orthodoxy that you think is an area that should be challenged or be investigated? Well, it's not so much that it can be challenged, um, because it has been challenged, but there, there's an underlying assumption in almost all the mathematics that's applied to the stock market that stock prices are uniformly distributed. That is, they follow a normal distribution. Well, stock prices don't follow a normal distribution. They have what we call fat tails. There are, mm -hmm. if, uh, um, there are too many large negative changes and too many large positive changes and too few small positive and, and negative changes. So we say that uh, that's a fat tail distribution. Right. So we've known about this for a very, very long time. Yet all of the tools, virtually all of the tools, uh, quantitative tools that are used uh, in the marketplace assume this normal distribution. Mm. So you, you don't have to go very far to uh, uncover these um, sort of myths um, that, that, that are waiting to be broken. So. There are a few people out there successfully using other sorts of distributions um, and modeling stock prices and gaining advantage in, in doing so. And you can find that again and again and again in different places in the marketplace. That just happens to be one particularly obvious one. Right. Getting back to your first principles, trend following, you've just mentioned it with fat tails. Trend following has been empirically shown to work uh, through academic studies, but also through the trading performances of many C mm -hmm. CTAs out there, but why do you think it's so hard for people to stick to a trend following strategy given that I'm talking about most people who are not professional CTAs who can understand that, you know, that there is evidence for this uh, system to, to work? I don't think it's th that it's hard for people to stick to trend following strategies. I think it's hard for people to stick, stick to strategies, period. Um, it's all about discipline. Mm -hmm. um, Discipline is probably the number one problem uh, for most portfolio managers, for most analysts, um, for most pe people involved in this business. The ability to execute again and again and again, um, even in, in, in circumstances that seem um, undesirable for, for, for that sort of idea. But if, you, if you've tested and you've, if you've thought through and if you're in touch with first principles and you, and you have a good <clears> system and, and, and you believe in it, then you, you have the, the, the necessary foundation for the discipline to keep on executing it. And that's what makes you successful. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't think it's a, a, um, a problem of trend following. I think it's a problem of, of, of analytics and, and portfolio management in general. Okay. Uh, I mean, you've added so much to the technical analysis literature um, over the years with Bollinger Bands and various indicators and, and books you. and so forth. Um, I'd be intrigued to know who is your most influential um, or mentor, most influential um, book or academic or mentor in your entire career? I'd go back to the, to, to the classic works of, uh, of technical analysis, to the Wyckoffs and the Shawbackers and, and um, the people um, who um, a long time ago explored the basic mechanisms of, of the market and, and, and created a lit literature, whether it's the Gartleys or um, um, the Humphrey Neals, um, there, there are, are, are so many of them. Um, uh, the work of, uh, of a more contemporary analyst like Jim Alfiera uh, is an example I worked mm. on, on, on getting his uh, work in, into the library. Um, it's these people who did classic work on the basic market mechanisms that were most influential uh, for me and um, whom I still consult. Right. Well, look, I'd like to say thank you very much for attending this year's annual symposium and oh, for your contribution pleasure. to technical my, my analysis pleasure. in general. So. Thank you. And this is Jamie Coots from the 2018 Chartered Market Technicians Association Symposium.